joining us today for this uh, topic on seller net sheets. Rick Capretta is one of our representatives from our preferred title company, Ohio Real Title, along with Janelle Kiefer, who you may also know on the east side, and then Jennifer O'Malley on the west side. Um, today, Rick is going to talk a little bit about seller net sheets, how you can get one, and all that good stuff. So I'm going to let Rick take it away. All right. Thank you. Let me find the right screen. All right, cool. All right. So does everyone see this road to understanding net sheets and buyers in a cash deal? Yep. All right, cool. Um, let's move this along over here and actually present if I could figure out how to be smarter than this thing. All right, cool. So um, before we even get started, um, you guys are welcome to open up your mics and do whatever you need there. Um, does anyone have any questions before we even start about anything in particular, um, any problems you've had trying to do net sheets in the past. Um, you know, I know the number one confusion is probably around taxes, which we're going to discuss. But uh, again, if anyone has any other questions, open up your mic now and let me know so I can make sure that I hit on that. All right, I'll take that as uh, we're going to talk about taxes a lot. So that's good. Okay, so um, if you guys have not had an opportunity yet, I dropped in the chat um, a place to register for an account if you don't already have one uh, with Ohio Real Title. Um, title Capture, I believe, is probably the main um, platform that most title companies around here use. So you might have access to another one. Um, you could use any of them in this example. Mine's just going to look a little bit different because obviously I'm using mine, um, but that's in the chat. Also, at the end of this presentation, I will drop in. It's only slick, six slides. It's not a million slides. I'm going to drop in the PDF so you guys have it for future reference in case you have any questions about what you need before you do one of these things. So I always start with uh, the definition of arrears. So as you guys may or may not know, taxes are in arrears. So money that's owed and should have been paid earlier. So Ohio taxes, we're always paying the prior year's taxes in the current year. Um, I think everybody understands that uh, applying it in net sheets is probably more so where the confusion is. But again, the word is arrears. I'll make my stupid corny joke because it's not a joke and I hear it way too often. It's not taxes in the rears, it's taxes in arrears. Two completely different things, please get that right. Although it does make me smile every time I hear in the rears. All right, so, um, so that's how Ohio does it. Not every other place does. So if you're dealing with somebody in another state, they're gonna be like, no, 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 no. Because that's not how my state does it. This is how Ohio does it. And, Many states are different in how they do it. I believe some might even do monthly current taxes. Um, again, I don't know because I only work in Ohio, but this is how we do it. And people from other places are wrong. This is, <laughs> this is how we do it. So how do we look at what's considered first half and what's considered second half? So um, since we're in 2024, we're paying taxes in 2024 for 2023. So we're looking at January 1 through June 30th of 2023 is considered the first half. So it's a traditional calendar. It's just the first six months from the first day to the last day of that sixth month. And then picking up the second half at July 1st through December 31st of 2023. Um, at this point in the year, I believe every county that we probably deal in has already been due. And if not, it's probably due here in a, in a minute. So everyone's first half taxes should be paid. Um, when looking at the county, we're going to do that in a second, um, you know, understanding if someone has a mortgage and they escrow their taxes, the actual mortgage company is going to make that payment on behalf of the buyer. I'm sorry, the, buy, the owner, now the current owner. If it's someone who bought cash, it is their responsibility to make that payment um, when they're due. And again, it's pretty typical January or February is when the first half is due, depending on your county. Second half is pretty much always going to be due in July. The, the only time I think where we've kind of gotten a little bit off of that was during COVID when counties were a little shorthanded and taxes were kind of all over the place and everything was all over the place. So uh, everything's pretty much back to normal for now. So 
So that's how we figure out which half we're talking about. Uh, and then it all make a little bit more sense as we get into the net sheet. So um, as I already drop in the chat, this is also the link you could uh, bookmark um, or once, you know, once you're already in there, you can just bookmark, you don't have to put this exact one down and you're all going to have these slides also. So, um, but ohiorealtitle.titlecapture.com is going to bring you to our main page. And what can you do here? So a lot of times people just want to compare title company fees. So you could simply go into title quotes and there's very little information you need to input there. Like literally address, is it financed or not? purchase price and you hit go and it'll give you both buyer side and seller side. That's not why we're here today, but that's literally the easiest way to take a look at the uh, title quotes. And it is important that you select the actual address you're talking about, or at least at the very least the actual city of the property, because different areas have different rates that have been customarily allowed. So Cuyahoga County, Lake County, Lorraine County, all out like the same, but down in Summit County, the fees allowed are a little bit less. You start going further south and then every all hell breaks loose. So uh, it's a little bit different. So make sure that you're talking the same language as somebody else's by using the right address or the right city because that'll pull up the right fees. Um, another one we're not going to go over today, but it's a pretty cool one. And it's the same thinking as the net sheet is a sell to net. So you guys in this market, I mean, I feel like most people are going to walk away with at least a couple bucks. In some of the historic markets where people were underwater, this was very, very important because let's say they said, look, I know I'm going to lose money, but I only have $10,000 to bring to the table to close this deal. So you can actually set it up where you get an amount that you need to clear. So it could be a negative amount. It could be a positive amount. Um, or someone's like, hey, I just want to break even. So, you know, you're you're basically searching for zero and it's just basically giving you what the purchase price should be to cover all those things, assuming you did the net sheet correctly. Um, and then buyer estimates is kind of similar to the title quotes. It's a little bit more involved. Um, and again, we don't have to go through that with the lender side, but if we have time, we'll go through it on the cash side because the lender side, we don't know what those fees are going to be, right? So I, the only time I build that is to strictly just show the title side, but honestly, the title quote sometimes is less confusing than the buyer estimate. But for a cash buyer, it's pretty darn close. So we'll show you how to do that and the seller net sheet. If I'm talking too fast, let me know. And if you have any questions up to this point, just feel free to jump in, stop me. You don't even have to raise your hand, just start talking. So this is kind of like what we need or what you need to create a net sheet. I don't think any of this stuff's going to be a surprise. And actually all of this stuff is this, the easy put stuff to input because you're taking it right off a contract or you're creating it with the seller, right? Maybe on a listing appointment or prior to after you've done your homework, you're going to kind of have an idea of where you want to price this thing or you think it'll sell. So just to review property address, purchase price, close date, mortgage payoff, that's up to you if you want to include it. If they're adamant about you putting it on the net sheet, that's fine. But every time I communicate any of these people, I'm like, this is an estimate. Like you don't have their payoff. Hell, they don't have their payoff. They just have what they see online, which isn't actually a payoff. Um, so you just want to be careful with that. Now I used to insist on not ever including them, but now I do based on, um, again, I just say it's an estimate. This is the information you gave me. So I kind of get myself off the hook with that. I suggest you guys use similar verbiage. If you're going to include those on your net sheet, um, commission. So I'll show you, there's a couple different ways. Um, there's obviously you can add a flat commission or you could add a flat percentage, but you could also do a split. Um, so like, you know, a seven, five or a six, four, the only option we don't currently have is like on the really higher price properties where you might see a three-way split, like, you know, a, a seven, five, three or something like that. Or if, you know, we just don't have that capability yet. So what I do there is I just do a hand calculation. And I drop it in as a flat rate, but I'll show you that. And then obviously additional commission. Some of you probably still just by habit calling it admin fee. There's a spot for that as well. Um, when we see the taxes, we're, what we're going to enter are half your taxes. Um, we are not going to depend on information that you guys get out of the MLS that you get from Realist or any of these other services. We're going to the county website to get the actual um, 
taxes because I don't trust anything unless it's on the auditor site and neither do my escrow officers. So that's where we're pulling information. I suggest that's where you guys get comfortable pulling information as well. And I think 90% of the websites have them listed as half your taxes. Only a couple show like annual taxes. And then you just kind of either split it or you go find like what payment was made and you could find the half there. Um, are they offering a home warranty? Are they offering seller concessions? Um, these two will be seen uh, in the uh, like additional expense portion at the bottom, which I'll show you as, as we get there. Um, you know, are there any other adjustments we don't know about? What, what would that be? Um, if someone has delinquent taxes, um, that's where I would put it. For you guys, if you see someone has delinquent taxes when you go to the auditor site, just don't do it. Call Janelle or I, let us do it. Um, they're a little bit confusing. Some people might know how to do it right away, but it's not worth the headache. Um, plus, with stuff like that, there's interest always rolling, so the number's not going to be perfect. Again, th these are estimates. Um, is there a water hold? Yes or no? That used to not be an option on our net sheet. That's new that we could toggle. Yes, there is, or no, there isn't. Um, you can't adjust the fee. It's going to still default to 200, which has still been kind of historically around here, kind of the norm. Um, if you wanted to make it truly accurate, you could make it an adjustment and say, you know, an additional $100 for a water hold. And then another thing that's new is the type of title insurance. Everything used to be calculated off standard insurance, but now with the new statewide purchase agreement, there is now a toggle to use either the standard or the enhanced and again, the enhance is 15% more on the premium, but it kind of also looks forward a little bit, also builds the value of the policy. And we could talk about that uh, later or never. Um, I'm kidding. Oh, here, going back here. All right. So now let's go ahead and open up um, our, oh, sorry, got to see if I can, there we go. All right. So now we're going to build a net sheet. All right. I, uh, and before I get going, any questions yet? Since I just minimized all your faces, I can't see anything. So I can't see any nodding. So I'll take that as a no. And again, feel free to stop me whenever you want. Delete this here. I don't know why that dropped in my personal email. All right. So I'm going to use an address I always use. It was the first house I owned in Mayfield Heights. So if you guys want to play along with me so we can all make sure we get the same or very similar numbers, make sure you're open in the app right now. And we're gonna add, and we're gonna do one five nine eight Hawthorne Drive in Mayfield Heights. So, as you see, I typed it in. It's gonna give you a drop down. You want to click it. You don't want to just keep typing in an email address because what this does is it locks in that location, so it locks in the right pricing. Okay. Um, if you're doing a new construction, uh, maybe a lot that you don't have like a specific address or it's not pulling up yet because it's a new street. Let's say there was a vacant lot on Hawthorne. I could just, oops. You know, I could do this, still not seeing it, Mayfield. Okay, so now I could at least pick the street. So let's just say the street is also so new that it's not even named and all we know is Mayfield Heights. Then we could just go ahead and pick Mayfield Heights. Any of the above are going to work, okay, to lock in that pricing, but you just need to click on something to lock it in. I'm just going to go back and put in the original uh, Hawthorne. After all these years, I still cannot spell it without screwing it up. Okay. Choose a branch. You guys don't have this option. Um, this is just from my side, and it's so we can track. It doesn't matter. Um, so sales price, I do want somebody to open up a, a microphone right now and let me know a good price these days for a bungalow with a finished, uh, dormer, two full baths. So somebody give me an idea of what that's probably going to go for in today's market. doesn't have to be perfect. Just give me an idea. Not all at once. Bueller, Bueller. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go two ten. I don't know if that's right or not, but uh, I certainly sold it for way less than that. So, um, close date here is important because what close date is gonna do is going to figure out the tax proration. So, what we first discussed was how do we come up with what's due for the half year 
calculations. This is also going to help calculate what is kind of built up. So what's accruing today that would be due next year, okay? So right now we know that we owe the 2023. First half should be paid ready. Second half's not paid yet. But we're accruing interest in 2024 that will get paid in 2025, okay? So that is calculated from January 1, 2024 through the close date. All right, so you close early in the year, that tax prorations that's on top isn't going to be that big. If you close on December 29th, 2024, that proration is going to be pretty much the full year proration is going to go to the next buyer because they're going to owe um, the tax payment in January or February of 2025. The good news is, is you guys don't have to calculate this. You just have to understand why the number is going to be different than the half year taxes that you guys um, are going to add in here down in a minute. Okay. So in this case, we're just going to use this date, close date uh, of the 22nd. It automatically defaults to about a 30 day close. Um, so you don't have to mess around too much there. And what's also nice is that it pulls up this little calendar. So if somebody wants like a 45 day close, I'm like, okay, that's two more weeks. So not this week. It'll be the first week in April. Boom. That's how you do it. Super easy, but we're just going to leave it right there. That calendar definitely helps speed things along. Um, so down here, this is the new section that had not been included. This is probably within the last month because of the statewide agreement. So is there a water holds fee? Um, it's Mayfield Heights. They have city sewer and city water. So I'm going to say yes, that's probably going to be included on the offer. And what type of policy do we want the basic or the enhanced? I'm just going to go with basic here because it's still predominantly what people are picking. This one here that says prior policy been issued within 10 years. So let's say I bought it two years ago and I would like to get a reissue rate or you guys know about that or, you know, someone's mentioning it or, 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 you know, you could say yes. And then the amount you would put here. And again, this isn't written anywhere. So just listen here or don't even include it. I wouldn't even bother, but I'll, I do it when I do them for you guys is you'd put in what they originally bought the house for. So in my case, I think it was 139,000. Um, so what it does is it'll basically create a discount on the new policy based off of the old policy having been issued within 10 years. Um, and it goes off the, the, the previous amount. Do you guys know what reissue rates are? Thumbs up, thumbs down for those I could see. No, yes is and no's. Okay, so reissue rate is like a 30% discount on the policy based on, I believe, like the difference between the new purchase price and this policy price. So it's not a ginormous difference. And again, if it's being, and it's not a full discount only to the seller. So if the contract says that the buyer and seller are splitting at 50-50, this discount will also be split 50-50. Um, is it worth it? Of course, if you're trying to save somebody money and you know, um, if Ohio Real Title closed it in the past, I can pull the policy. Like you, escrow is not automatically going to search and see if it's 10 years old or not. They're going to want you guys to let them know. Um, but we can pull anything we've closed in the past. If we did not close it and you would like your client um, to get the um, reissue rate, they'll have to send us in their old policy or at the very least, let us know what title company did it and maybe reach out to them and just have, get the policy sent over to Ohio Real Title. It really isn't that difficult. Most people don't know where their actual policy is, but if they remember who closed it, at least they can reach out to them and have it sent over to us or to you, and then you could send it to us. Uh, and again, the discount's not ginormous, unless say I got this house for 139 and now I'm selling it for, you know, a million, maybe the, maybe the discount would seem more substantial. I don't know, but it's not huge, but it's something. Um, and you guys don't have this, I believe, right? Nobody sees manually adjust title fees. Yeah, so that's just one that I could do there. Um, when would I use this? I would use this if I have like an investor and I need to put in the investor rates instead, I could adjust stuff there. Um, or if I wanted to make the, the water hold, say it was a $500 hold, I could, I could make those adjustments there. You guys can't. So if it's something like that, you could always ask me or Janelle to do that or Jen. 
Um, in this case, we will put in a loan payoff just because this is imaginary land. This is where you'd put it. So let's say I owed $75,000 or whoever owns this owes $75,000 on it. Um, real estate commissions, we talked about the uh, that you can do flat or you can do the graduated. Um, just because the graduate is a little bit more complicated, we'll do that. And again, this isn't hard. If you're going to do it, if you're the list agent, you can do it either way. So if you're, let's say you've got a seven, five negotiated and you're taking four, three, and you're offering a three, two, then you can do that. You can show four, three and three, two, and then uh, transaction fee at uh, greater Cleveland or, or greater Metropolitan's what? Oh, you're not mute. Uh, you're still muted. Two forty nine, two forty nine. Okay, so we'll put that in there. So, so this is one way you could do it. If you don't want to split them, you're not sure what you're going to do yet. You're doing this literally on a listing appointment, and you're proposing a seven five. Just put it up here, just on your all on your side. Um, you know, if this is closer to the end of a deal and you want to break it up, you can. But as long as the two numbers add up to the first number and these two numbers add up to the second number you're okay. Does that make sense or no? Again, I'll show you. So a four here and a three here and a three here and a, oops, and a two here. These two matched up would make your seven. These two would make your five. Yeah, good. If you want to split them up that way. Like you said, we're just going to make it easy on ourselves and just go back and do a seven five up here, okay? Transaction fees in there. Homeowners associations do, if there is a HOA, if you're selling a condo or something or a place that has homeowners, don't even put it in here because we don't know if they're current. You don't know if they're current. We don't know how it's billed monthly, semi-annually, annually. We don't know any of that stuff. Just leave this part blank. No one's gonna make or break a deal based on the HOA dues. Um, on the seller side, like what are they going to get back or how much more are they going to owe? Uh, from a buyer side, it might make a little bit more sense if there's a ginormous assessment and they need to know some of these things and they have to qualify. But for right now, this is basically what a little amount that would be either owed by the homeowner or a little amount that's going to be um, a credit back to the homeowner if they paid annually and they're only in the house for three months. Of course, they'd get some money back and then the buyer would be charged for the rest. Oops. Sorry. So, like I said, for you guys, don't touch it. I don't even really touch it. I wait for escrow to actually have real numbers from the HOA to do that. Property taxes. Okay. So like I said, where are we going? To the county. We're not depending on the numbers you guys pulled up on your systems. We're going to the county. So um, it, how many of you are familiar with the county sites? Have searched something on there? Whether it be your own taxes, a taxes for uh, one of these situations. Um, every county's is a little bit different, but you know we're going to do a Cuyahoga County one because it's the easiest uh, to me because I do it all the time. Um, so we could either do by address, parcel, or owner. Um, I don't know the parcel, so I'm going to default to address. Sometimes you might not even know the address. You just have somebody's name and you're trying to search it yourself. Um, it's nice to be able to search it by owner. But here we're going to go 1598. Hawthorne, and these are the current owners. So you click on that. And Cuyahoga is great. You got taxes right here and you're gonna go to taxes by year, okay? Right there in the middle. And we're gonna just scroll down here and we find half year taxes net or half year net taxes. All right. So what I do right away is I don't get that dollar sign in there, but I get the full number and I just copy it and I'm going to paste it here. But first, I want to talk about a couple of things to look for on this page. Oops, sorry, this thing. All right. So we see that the half your tax is one thousand eight hundred sixty six and seventy three cents. Total year charges. 37, 33, 46. Okay, that looks like it's pretty much double. Doesn't look like there's any delinquent 
beyond that, we see right here, one payment has been made in that exact amount. Perfect. Balance due, same exact amount. This is what you guys want to see this time of year. Um, or worst case scenario, let's just say where it said payments and it was zero and balance due was still the 37.33. That's okay. There's not much delinquent anything at this point. It's it's just they hadn't made that payment yet. So um we know that everything is going to be really clean with this one. So we don't see anything delinquent. One where we might, you guys are going to be like, uh, Rick, Janelle, help me out here. We see the half year taxes here. And then we see something like $10,000 because they had a lot of delinquent taxes in the past. And even if maybe they made a payment here, sometimes they have 10,000 in charges and then they have an $8,200 payment here. And you look over here like, oh, balance due is actually the right number. So they actually caught up. They knew they were going to sell. They wanted everything to look clean. So sometimes it's okay if these two numbers match and there is a really weird number here and a really crazy number here, because oftentimes people do actually catch it up before they sell. Not always, but sometimes. But in that case, you can use the regular numbers again. So I'm probably talking too much. Let's copy this number and go back to the net sheet. So where we have property taxes and we have that uh, 1,866.73, I'm going to paste it in twice. If you are someone who'd rather just write it down and retype it in, that's fine. Um, so again, I'm going to just bounce back. They did make their first half payment. Right, and you can even see that here. First half balance zero, second half due eighteen oh four. Okay, I'm sorry, it's eighteen oh four because I'm of the sewer maintenance charge. But down here, you're gonna see that that full number matches this half year. Um, so they made their first half payment. So what are we gonna pick? No payments made, first half made, or payment or tax has been paid for the whole year. I think we're going to pick first half's been paid, right? That's what we just saw. So pretty easy. They made their first half payment. We are um, nothing tricky about this at all. Um, here in this, so now we're going to move on to the next tab. Other seller expenses and credits. If there was a home warranty offered, and I'm just going to say there was, just so you guys can see where you would do that. These you type in yourself and then you add in the amount. So I'm just going to say 450 for the home warranty. Okay. So everything here is filled out to the best of our ability. Here, I'm going to just, I see I've got a couple of things in the, uh, up. Oh, thanks. They resent the link. Okay, good. Just check in the chat. So now we're going to hit calculate. Is everybody good? Thumbs up, thumbs down to this point. Thumbs up. Okay. So hit calculate. All right, does everyone have 116,301? If you do, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. And it's okay. It doesn't matter. If you didn't if something's different, we'll figure out what was different and we'll clean it up. Um, I'm seeing some smiles that don't look too sure about whether that number's right or not, and that's okay. That's what I figured. So, let's just scroll down and see what might be different. So, all of this stuff right in here, the title and settlement charges are pretty much predetermined, okay? The only thing that we quote unquote added in was the water hold. We said, yes, there is a water hold. If we would have said no, that wouldn't be showing. But we said yes when we built that out. So you should see the water hold of uh, $200. Um, conveyance fee. Um, does everyone know what the conveyance fees are or what it is or who, who gets paid to? Yes, no, I'll explain. Conveyance fee is paid by the seller. It is $4 per thousand of the purchase price, okay? So we picked what? 210, so if you just do 210 times four, you're gonna get $840. That goes right to the county. Um. And it's basically just your the cost of doing business of selling something in the county. Um, conveyance fees can sometimes be avoided. So if I say quit claim deeded or even sold the house to my son, there would be no conveyance fee, parent to child or child to parent. Child or parent to nephew, conveyance fee is in effect, but it's like parent to child is really the only way. Um, or let's say I have 
I hold the house in an LLC that I am the sole owner of. And if I transfer the house from the LLC to myself, then I could avoid a conveyance fee because the ownership really didn't change. On paper, it did, but it's still me. Um, that's another way. Don't get too bog bogged down in that. I'm just explaining some situations where it is avoidable. Um, you guys probably won't even ever run into it. Um, it might be something more so if you're helping somebody maybe put something in someone's name to sell or something, you know, odd situations that might come up, ask Janelle or I. Um, and again, that's not anything we chose. That's automatic. So right here, we've got the, the loan payoff. I put in $75,000. So if you put in $75,000 also, that should be there. Listing broker commis commission. We did the split. So we did the seven five on the seller side with the two forty nine additional commission. So you should all have twelve five and two forty nine. The county taxes. All right, where is the twenty six ninety two coming from? Well, we know the second half from twenty twenty three is unpaid. So we're starting with one thousand eight hundred sixty six seventy three. The remaining, call it $800, is from January 1st through the close date of, I think it was March 22nd, something like that. So that's basically a, a full quarter's worth of uh, additional taxes that the seller is going to credit to the buyer because the buyer will be responsible to make the second half payment and next year's first half payment. So basically, it is the seller making the buyer whole with taxes that the seller has accrued on their own. Does that make sense to everyone? Good. Um, and then as you see on the bottom, we've got the home warranty that we decided to add in for $450. Um, so if everyone has all the same matching numbers, then we should all have 116-301-58. If you do not, and you realize which number you did not have correct, or if you wanna just change the whole situation, you just come back all the way to the top and you can edit this thing. So if any of you got it incorrect because you missed something or forgot to put it in, go ahead and hit edit and go back in and try to correct what you had wrong. If you don't, if you need me, oh, what is this? <clears throat> oh, Gail's asking, what if your water hold is more than 200? So if the water hold is more than 200, actually let's go into the edit mode and I'll show you. So you could either ask me to do it or Janelle, we could, like I said, we can manually make those changes right here. Oh, you know what? This is this is why I'm sorry, guys. I forgot I actually put a prior policy liability amount in there, so that that might have thrown you guys off too there. Um, so that's that changed the owner policy amount. So um, Brian, do me a favor and write down the um, amount you see right now for owner's policy because I'm going to actually take this out because I want to see what the the savings is between the two amounts. So if you're on your net sheet with here, I can do it too. Let's just recalculate. So let me see. So the owner's policy was right here, 446, 36 with the discount. Okay. Um, so if we go back in and we take out the reissue rate, and I'm sorry, I don't usually put the reissue rate in there. That was stupid on my part. So let's delete that out and say no and recalculate this to see what kind of a savings that would have been or was. So that was about $120 savings to both the buyer and seller. So it went from five, four, $566 to 446 if there was a reissue rate. So again, $120 isn't nothing, right? So it's worth it for one phone call from somebody to say, uh, hey, I need my old, I need my policy to get to the title company to save $120. I think five minutes of somebody's time is probably worth $120. And it's actually $240 because both the buyer and seller are benefiting that $120, okay? Now, Gail, back to your question. So if you have a water hold of say 500, just for a nice round number, and we know that 200 is already there, you can go to other seller expenses and credits, and this would be considered an expense. So water hold, you know, additional, if you want to say that, of 300. So now you're going to have it as a new line item. So you'll have basically two. You'll have the water hold here of 200, and then you'll have the water hold additional 300 right here. 
hopefully that answered that question. Um, as to any, if you ever need to make any adjustments, okay. Um, like I said, seller concessions and home warranty are the two biggest ones. Um, uh, let me show you guys another one. Let's say the buyer's paying the seller's closing costs because you guys have that, right? You guys have seen plenty of buyer paying seller closing costs in this market. So this one wouldn't actually be an expense. This would be a credit back to the seller because the buyer's paying. Let's say the buyer was going to pay $2,500 to sweeten the pot and get their deal taken. So this would be buyer paid, you know, like seller closing. Closing costs. I don't remember what I just said. Let's say $2,500. So, you know, not their net just went up because now they basically just got $2,500 back from the buyer, which would be indicated down here. So you've got your two seller expenses, the warranties and expense of the seller, an additional water hold would be considered an expense. A credit's coming back to them, not going out of their pocket. So that's a credit and that would be down there. So those are kind of some of the ways that you can manipulate some of your numbers to get them to where they need to be without uh, reaching out to Janelle or I or your escrow team to do that. Does that make sense for everyone? All right, um, before I even move on to the next uh, piece of the buyer expense, does anyone have any questions now about the net sheet? No? All right, good, all right, cool. Very good, so on to the next. New estimate. So again, these are all the different things you could do. Like I said, title quote was the one where you could just drop in an address, purchase price, and if there's a uh, financing or not, that's a title quote. Shows you both buyer and seller closing cost sides. We're not going to do it. It's super easy. Loan estimate quote. Don't ever do it. Uh, closing disc disclosure quote. Don't ever do it. For sellers, you can use all three of these. I did briefly discuss the sell to net where you're working backwards to get to a number. Um, that's kind of cool. Like I said, if someone has a bottom line they need to be at, you start with that number and then it calculates a purchase price. Um, what's kind of goofy about this is, let's just say I said I wanted a $10,000, um, I want to walk away with 10,000 and I do this whole thing and it might say, okay, here you go. You're going to walk away with 9,930. I'm like, I wanted 10,000, not 909, you know? So then you just add another couple hundred bucks on the purchase price to cover it up. So that's, you know, you, you, like I said, it's for whatever reason, it doesn't want to calculate perfectly, but it's close enough where you could figure out what that purchase price needs to be just to cover up that. It's not dollar for dollar. Remember that it's never dollar for dollar. Because your commission's based off of a percentage. The owner's policy is based off a percentage. So I always tack on just a little bit more. And you know, I hate to say it, stuff happens in a transaction. So sometimes I might even add an extra 500 or 1,000 on so that they don't have to come up with money. Say they just needed to break even. I'd hate for someone to have to come up with money because I gave them a bad number. So sometimes I pad it just a little bit, okay? Um, multiple offers, you could use this. Um, I find it's a little cumbersome. I like the seller net sheet better and just editing the purchase price. Um, so, you know, start it at 2000, edit it, make it 210, edit it, make it 220. Bing, bang, boom, super easy, super fast. The seller multiple offers a little bit cumbersome. Um, buyer estimate is where we're going to go next. And we're going to do this as a, cash transaction. All right. Just for fun, because we already have the numbers, we're going to choose, guess which address? That's right. 1598 Hawthorne Drive again. So if you want to play along, um, go ahead and jump in the buyer estimate. And we're going to choose this one again. All right. You guys on that branch. So because... Like you said, with financing, things always get a little hairy. We're just going to say you've got a cash buyer in the situation. And we're going to use the same exact scenario, 210000 as purchase price. We're going to leave the close date as whatever it defaults to uh, in this situation. We're going to say, yes, there's a water hold fee. And we know that's automatically 200 We're going to leave the policy as basic. 
And we're going to say no prior policy has been issued within 10 years. Okay. So we're just going to leave all those except for the water hold. Um, home insurance, don't even worry about it. You're not worried about home insurance at all. Property taxes, we still have these from up here. Let's do a different scenario though. All right. Let's say um, over here, balance due is zero. And the payments are 37.33. Okay, so we're still going to just add this in twice back over here, but we're going to say this is later in the year. Or maybe, or somebody maybe just made their full tax payment, you know, in January for the whole year. So in that situation, last time we picked first half has already been paid. Um, so our two options are no payments have been made or taxes have been paid for the entire year. They have a zero balance. It's going to be taxes have been paid for the entire year, okay? Real estate commissions, because you're doing a buy side, they're only they're not going to be paying the commission. Hopefully, um, hopefully all they're going to be paying is whatever brokerage fee that they're using. Uh, I'm sorry, the the additional commission which we said was two forty nine, right, Brian? Yep. All right, and then we're not messing with homeowners. We're not messing with impounds. We're not messing with lender fees. Again, there's a cash deal. Um, other buyer expenses and credits. Um, if let's just say your buyer was going to pay, you know, some fees for the seller, this is where you would put it. And it would be an expense to the buyer. So you could put like, you know, paying sellers closing costs, 2,500, if we wanted to do it, we're not doing that right now. So here we go. This is going to show them what's due at closing. So this is not assuming any earnest money. This is just including the earnest money that they would put down. But this would be the total amount down. And we're like, okay, it costs 210 Why is it only $900 more when we know there's fees? There's other stuff like that. We'll bring it on down to the credit. So you always got to remember that that buyer is getting a credit from the seller for future taxes to be paid. And in this case, the, the seller had paid for the entire year. So the only part that they're going to need to credit is from January 1 through the close date in 2024, which is at 825. And that 825 almost negates the entire fees that we charge. So that's why there's only a very small difference between what the purchase price is and how much they are actually going to owe because of that tax credit. If the if the seller hadn't made a payment all year, or let's just say they even made the first half payment, they'd actually owe less than the actual purchase price, which still always blows my mind, but shouldn't, but whatever. So that's that. So it basically have everything here. This is super easy. Just like all the other ones. Here, let me try to move this thing up. Um, just like any of the others, you could edit it. So if you need to edit the purchase price or anything else, um, the way that I personally will send these to you guys if you request one and the way that i suggest you send it is download the pdf and then send the pdf the pdf just looks nicer i think than the email but you can email it directly to someone right here so that's you if you're in a hurry or you're on your phone and you don't know how to retrieve pdfs on your phone that you downloaded you can just share it with them this way nothing wrong with it i just feel like downloading it here and pulling it out, it just looks sharper. Here, I'll show it to you guys. Uh, that is not it. Hmm. Not sure where that guy just went. Here he is. Here you go. So. Here's how it looks. It's going to have, you know, if you upload a photo of yourself, it'll have my smiley ass face or Janelle's or whoever your rep is. And then you'll be right here with all your contact information and your picture will be right here also. Um, and again, shows you the exact same thing, but in a nice tight PDF rather than uh, email, which I feel sometimes email formatting just looks different. So, um, so that's pretty much how to do a buyer estimate for cash buyer, how to do a seller net sheet, how the taxes work and all that. Does anyone have any questions now that we've gone through the whole presentation?
I mean, it's not too hard. Once you understand the taxes, the rest of the stuff, you and the seller or you and the buyer are determining. Um, there's really not that much rocket science that's going on here. It's literally just understanding which time the taxes should be charged or shouldn't. If you're not sure, do one, send it over to Janelle or I. We'll do the exact same net sheet that you just did and make sure that our numbers come out the same. This way, you're confident in sending something over to your client and you're not feeling like, I just messed up. Or I know plenty of uh, agents who just decide to not even include the taxes. They just say, yeah, there's going to be some taxes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's safe. Or some people use like a certain percentage for closing costs. Everything's right at your fingertips. I suggest you give numbers that are as tight as you can to people because uh, you don't want someone to be upset, nor do you want to be surprised at the end. Reiterate a hundred times that this is an estimate uh, to everyone that you're involved with. And I think think that pretty much about covers it guys you have oh, another chat thank you rick all right thank you brian i'm, I'm going to add in one more thing for you guys um, i'm going to add in the presentation so if you guys want to download that you can oh boy what do we have in here all right all right cool here is the presentation so i'll give everybody a minute to pull that out if they want it if you guys need it um i'll give you my email address right here. Just reach out to me anytime and uh, I'll just send it to you separate or any other questions that you have. And there's my phone number. All right. So thank you all for joining today.